What's up everyone, Jace Two Cents here. We're gonna take a look today at the new ARC-90. Not to be confused with the old ARC-90. I don't even know if there is a regular ARC-90, but this is the new ARC-90 from Gamer Storm. This is actually a case designed by Deepcool where they took the water cooling loop and built it directly into the case. The new Cooler Master H500P Mesh White provides maximum airflow, sleek design, and elegant tempered glass giving you the ultimate platform to show off your next build. Learn more about the new H500P by heading to CoolerMaster.com. This is probably one of the better packed cases I've seen in a long time. It actually comes with this soft cell foam that is cardboard reinforced. So even if the case gets dropped or mishandled by the lovely folks over at FedEx, UPS, and DHL, and of course your local postal service, then uh, it's gonna be pretty well protected. They also included this gamer mat. I think this comes with every single case, but check that out. This is a wide gaming mat that you can put your keyboard and your mouse on. You gotta let it you know, lay flat for a while to get some of the rolled kink out of there. But this is kind of neat. I don't recall the last time I've seen a gamer mat come with a case. And then something else that made this a pretty easy unboxing experience, even for a dullard like me, who's very bad at taking things out of a box, it has this strap that's wrapped around the case so you can easily pull it out of the box. That already tells us that this is a fairly premium product from a company that's taken a lot of pride into this. So, but you know, obviously the most important part is build quality. What is the loop like? And then we'll talk about some of the features of this case as soon as I, I get this all apart. All right, first peel incoming. All right, right off the bat, I can see we have got tempered glass. Yes. And forget the front. Man. See, piano finish on plastic is a terrible thing because it always looks scratched when you try and clean it or dusty. You wipe it down to try and clean it, you scratch it. But obviously tempered glass is not gonna give you that experience because it is very, very resistant to scratches. So this is one of those side mounted radiators where it actually goes on the back panel of the case and not the front or the top. Now remember, this is a built-in water cooling loop. Unfortunately, there is a fan blade completely missing from one of the... Uh, one of the 280 millimeter fans. So you can see the fan hub and everything right here, even the LEDs, obviously there's supposed to be a fan right there. Now it looks like we have a triple fan radiator, but we actually don't. Down here where the bottom fan is, there is no radiator. It's just a 280. So that means there's two 140 millimeter fans here and here, or in this case, one and a half. But you can see the hub where the fan was, the LEDs that light up the fan and everything, even the, even the copper coil right there to make the fan turn, thinking maybe it fell out in transit, maybe it got dropped during shipping, which could have knocked it out, which, you know, would have kind of absolved deep cool of, of any issue with that. So it looks like we have quarter inch rubber tubing running from our radiator over to our pump. This is basically the same pump you'll find in their Captain Series AIOs and the way they get around the Asetec patent is the fact that they bring the fluid outside of the pump and then back in on top, making this not an all self-contained unit, which is how they kind of get away uh, with not having to deal with Asetec, which in my opinion is a good thing because we need more options besides Asetec. You can see on the back right here though, this is where it exhausts the air from inside the case. This is an exhaust, so it is pulling fresh air from inside the case and blowing it out the backside right here. Kind of becoming a thing a lot more case manufacturers are doing now, kind of utilizing this space on the back of the case to uh, not, not a captive thumb screw, keep that in mind. But they're, they're kind of utilizing that space to keep a more open interior and I've not done any testing though, whether or not that kind of a 90 degree bend the air has to make in that open space could actually affect cooling. But, oh, okay, there it is, found it. But as I was saying, I've never actually done a test to see if a radiator mounted on the side like this, having to kind of pull air from the main compartment like this is more efficient or not. Obviously we have a more open configuration. Our hard drive cages go down here in the bottom and then you can put front side fans on there if you want, but obviously there is no intake fans whatsoever on this case and only one exhaust fan in the back. Now we need to see if we can't pop this guy back on. Hey, there we go, good as new. We'll just chalk that up to the shipping company. So here's a 280 millimeter radiator right here. Don't confuse this with a standard Asetec style radiator because this is a cross flow and not a double pass. So the water comes in the top right here, flows through all the rows at the same time and it collects down here at the outlet where it's actually routed to the front of the case where we have a, a very thin tube style reservoir with LED lighting behind it, RGB lighting of course, to light up the fluid on the front of the case. 
This is purely an aesthetic. It's not something you can actually open up and service. We'll take a look at that closer in a second though. But that's probably why we also don't have a 420 radiator version unless they switch this over to a dual double pass because you have to have room for this fitting right here on the bottom. So even if you had a 90 right here, there still wouldn't be enough room on the bottom of the case before it impacts on the floor. Well, they might be asking yourself, Jay, if there's nothing down here to cool, no radiator, why is there this fan? Well, this fan is actually pulling air through where the hard drive cages are. So this is giving you some active airflow over your storage. But on the back of the case, you have two SSD trays there, an ample opening here for a large power supply if you need it. Plenty of room right here for your wire management to be able to pass through. Lots of rubber grommets making it easy to route cables the way you need them to. And then of course, we have a lot of LED and fan controller functionality pre-plugged in on this case. So you provide SATA power to it and then you can actually power your LEDs and your fans off of this cable. Now the front of this is not coming apart nearly as easy as I had hoped. There's some tabs here on the inside that hook onto where the fan is or the fans would go and the metal is just kind of flexing around in there and not unhooking like you want like it wants to. So it's, there we go. Pull it from the bottom. So the plexi or the plexiglass, the tempered glass is actually attached to this solid panel. Now, if you're gonna be putting on front fans right here, keep in mind the only place it's gonna be getting air is through, is through an opening at the top right here, these very restrictive slits on the side, and this little bit of a cutout on the bottom. Otherwise, you could actually put one, two, three, uh, three 120 millimeter fans right here. I don't see any mounting holes for 140s, so only 120s are gonna fit in the front. And then kind of the same thing on the top. The problem is the metal just wants to flex where these are but it looks like these are obviously identical pieces for the top and the bottom. So you got three hot swap drives right here, which is kind of funny. They're hot swap on the front, but you actually have to remove these three screws from the side in order to get the hot swap portions to actually come out. They're in there really tight right now though, because all the case accessories are sitting in there, like this box right here and this guy right here, which is making them not slide too easily. But once you take those out, obviously the hot swaps are pretty easy to get in and out. So in this black box here, we've got a few things. Um, looks like we've got a mounting mechanism for our cooler. We've got a thermal paste, and of course, our instruction manual. Now this big gray piece right here doesn't actually stay with the pump. It's mounted uh, down to the motherboard tray, and the pump is mounted to it just to keep it safe during transport. But this part gets removed. You replace the pieces, obviously using the manual, with the mounting bracket for your socket type, and then you can obviously mount this down to your motherboard. So you can see the block is full copper right here. So it's a perfect size for stuff like AM4 or Intel. Not gonna be very good in my opinion for something like Threadripper. I don't even think this supports Threadripper according to the manual. Nope, it doesn't, but it supports all your standard Intel and AMD sockets. Too small for Threadripper though. So the mounting plate's pretty straightforward. You've got these standoffs you push through based on the type of socket you're installing in. So obviously use your manual for that, RTFM. Push it through the backside. And then you've got these retainer nuts that actually have a rubber washer on them to keep from grounding anything on your motherboard. And these lock down to hold that into place. So you take the crossbars, mount these down on the standoffs that you just placed using these shorter screws. You can rotate the fittings kind of up and out of the way. And then you just mount the actual pump down onto those crossbars. And you can't really screw it down too tight. You basically go until the threads stop. It is spring loaded. Now obviously you put down your thermal paste. In this instance, I'm just showing you the way it mounts. So you can just screw this down until it pretty much comes to a rest. The spring will make sure that there's proper tension on there. You can bottom out the threads. Just go until they stop. Don't over tighten. Just once the threads stop, you're done. Then your pump is installed. So you've got a complete water-cooled system now that's pre-built into the case. So that's pretty neat. One other thing worth mentioning is it does have a vertical mount option for the graphics card. You can see we've got some standoffs here pre-installed for that option but the actual riser card meant for this case is an optional piece. So it doesn't come with the case. It's something you have to buy separately. So the case rotated on its front now to show you the top IO. This is a two USB 3.0s, headphone, microphone jack, power button, but also your LED controller and your fan controller are on these little buttons right here on the side. And here's the three uh, fan installation points on the top of the case that I mentioned. So you can have three on the front, three on the top for a total of six, plus the three 140 millimeters on the side plus the 120 or 140 millimeter exhaust on the back. So there's a lot of fan options on this case. Question is whether or not those panels actually reduce the airflow. So as mentioned, all the fans have built-in RGB. There's even a little glowing RGB Gamer Storm logo right here, rear fan, and the front reservoir, as mentioned, also has RGB on there. So definitely keeping with the RGB craze, um, 
Yeah, so you can control the brightness of it. You can control the fan speed as well on here, but obviously the fans aren't turning. And you can control the different modes with this button right here. So they're pretty basic. It'll cycle through the different colors. It'll either give you a solid color and you can control the brightness of it, but you get the idea. You've all seen RGB and you know how it works. So anyway, that has been my first look here at the new ARC-90 from Gamer Storm. Like I said, I don't know if it's actually new. That's just the name. They call it the new ARC-90. Built-in water cooling loop, taking a lot of the guesswork out of cooling your CPU. Um, again, it's probably as good as any other AIO. We do plan on testing this in the future when we do a full build in here. I just don't have the parts available to do this build right now, but we will circle back. I expect the results to be as good as any other 280 millimeter AIO, which means it's gonna be able to cool your Ryzen chips, it'll be able to cool your K-SKU Intel chips, all the way up to X299, giving you some mild overclocking available depending on which chip you go with. All your mainstream stuff, you should be able to overclock with no problems as long as case airflow is good enough, and that's what I plan on testing. I'm still a little concerned that the front panels on this case are a bit restrictive, not allowing enough intake into the case, which can obviously affect the cooling because the cooler is pulling directly from the volume inside the case and not through the air being pulled in through the front or exhausted through the top like a traditional format. So because it's mounted to this back wall, it's dependent entirely of the air that is being brought into the case already which as I mentioned in the beginning of this video is already a little bit flawed because there are no intake fans whatsoever on this case as it is. So relying on these 140 millimeter fans that are mounted 90 degrees perpendicular to the rest of the intake and exhaust on this case, I think that's asking a lot of work. So we will be testing that in the future, but at least we got a chance to open it up and take a look at it. A lot of you asked me to take a look at this case. So when Deep Cool reached out and asked if I wanted to look at it, I was like, absolutely, a case that has water cooling built in, why wouldn't I? You guys tell me your initial thoughts on this and what kind of testing do you wanna see? Obviously, we're gonna test things like thermals and acoustic. Uh, we're gonna test it in its as-shipped format, just like this, with the case uh, fans oriented as they are. And then we'll add some fans to this and see how much of a difference it makes. Anyway, guys, we're gonna go. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.